Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In the last two videos we set up almost everything that the game engine needs in order to run our game. We made sure that all information about the active scene is saved and that the engine is able to read that information. Also now we have a winmain function that initializes, updates and shuts down the game engine and our game with it. In this video, we are going to put everything together so that we can run our fully functioning game application. Now we have to call load game when the engine is initialized and unload game when the engine shuts down. And that we can do in the engine CPP where we wrote those functions to initialize and shut down the engine. And because we don't have anything to do in the update function, I'm going to just sleep here for a while every time this function is called. And we also do it like this only when we are developing the game. So that means that we need to put this again in this shipping if dev block. Okay, let's see now what happens when we try to load the game. I'll set a breakpoint here. Let's look in the location where the game is. So we have this debug, which is for the standalone build of the game, and debug editor is where the DLL is. And we are interested in debug for the standalone. Now when we build the game, there should be a game.bin here in this location. So the assertion that the buffer size should not be zero failed. And if we click retry, we can see here that this buffer is indeed empty. On the other hand, if you look at this location, there is this game.bin, which is populated with binary data. So that's good, but something is going wrong here. And that's because our working directory is different from where we save this game.bin. And we have to change our working directory here if we want to have access to this game.bin because on default, this if stream file will look in the working directory and that's different. So we have to set it to the location where this file is. And because we are on a Windows machine using this method, we can change the working directory by calling a couple of Windows API functions. First, we can get the location of the executable that we are running. To get the executable path, we can call get module file name function.
Here we are trying to get the path to the executable using this function, and we are creating a buffer that's 260 characters long, which is the maximum path length in Windows. And if the path that we are getting is longer, then there will be this error, insufficient buffer. And in that case, the path is just too long, and then we return false. I should be editing this in the Visual Studio, which has the game engine open and not the game code solution. So let's switch to the right Visual Studio. So this function will give us the full path to the executable, and we only need the location of the executable, not the location including the file name of the executable. So I'm using this file system path to get the parent path of this full path, which effectively will give me the location of the executable, excluding the name of the executable. And then I'll use this Windows function to set the current directory. And now if I press F5 to run the game, it will try and build it and load it in the game executable. So it's exiting right away and I need to find out why. So I'm going to set breakpoints here. I made a typo here, it should be not length. So if the length would be zero, then we should return false. Now the game is loaded, so the result is true. And the game should be updated. I forgot to call engine update here, so I have to add it. And also let's write an update function for scripts that we can call to update all the entity scripts. This is a simple function that goes through the array of entity scripts that we have and call their update function. And this way, all scripts will be updated. And here in engine, we can just call that update function from the script CPP. Now, for example, if I would do something here that would make a sound, like a beep, then we could hear this Kusala Gubaku beeping.
So now you can hear the first output of our game, the first sounds of our first game ever. I almost get too emotional hearing this. I can add another Kusala Gubakup. Now it's going faster because we have more Kusalaguba Coops beeping. I'm enjoying this much more than I should, so let's stop this. So yeah, now we can run our game standalone and it's updating the entity scripts. One big disclaimer is that this is not even close to how I'm going to update the function eventually. This is just a placeholder for us to enable us to move on and develop the rest of the engine before doing this update properly in a multi-threaded manner. So for now this will just do. And later on I'll make this the way it should be. Because later we will have a multi-threaded task system that will be in charge of updating the engine and making sure that everything runs smoothly on multiple CPU cores. For now, what we first need is actually to have a main window for our game so that we can start displaying things that we can see and not only sound. And that's the subject of the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.